What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny's MCU in review. Of course, I am Tim Geddes. I'm joined by the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Earlier, Greg was just saying, I'm begging you, start the show. <laughs> and he's just got some. <laughs> this is the first show we're recording in 2024 together. Yeah. Uh, it's a, we're energy. actually recording this before <laughs> Kind of Funny Day. So uh, I hope you guys had a great Kind of Funny Day. I'm sure we all did. Uh, but yeah, this is the first time the four of us have sat at this desk to make some content. How's that make you feel, Big Daddy Greg? Yeah, you know, we've been so busy getting ready for Kind of Funny Day. I didn't realize how many of the electricity gremlins I had inside me <laughs> because they're ping ponging around in there. Yeah, Let's yeah. just start with the list of grievances from the top. Okay. What are you and Nick fucking doing? What, what, when did this happen? When was it we're moving into the what Yeti about? era? We're getting the giant crazy ass drinks. You're, you're as bad as Roger, and you were making fun of Roger a while Roger's back. the originator. He's the president of the Hydration Nation. The water boys are yeah, real. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you actually, you're one of the people that inspired me. You got this uh, Nalgene bottle. Yeah. You've been hydrating with it. Yeah. And Tim and I took it one step further as we do as a younger generation. Does it make you upset that Tim's is bigger than yours? You know, it did at first. He brought it up to me no less than four times today. Yeah. <laughs> Separate times. Yours is, Honestly, yours is it's so a, much bigger. It's a quality over quantity thing though, uh -huh. right we're like this is a yeti that's that's a brand man. well this, this is the brand that everyone's going crazy over this is the basic brand stanley yeah the but stanley, stanley, Cup, stanley they call used to have Greg. the thermos remember that and like yep. that was you had a respectable yeah, i have a thermos i drank out of it yesterday no um he's not wrong the stanley is the one that everyone wants uh I, this was a crime of opportunity as one would say i was at a hardware store uh, buying Fair. screws or something like that i don't know and i saw this up on the shelf and i was like i want that one went and googled it hemmed and hawed because they do have a bigger one they have that same size Thought I'd yeah. try this out for a week and literally put it in the car. It does not, it barely fits in my cup holder. And every time I even turn my head, I hit the Boonk. fucking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm not getting the bigger one. Mine now. does I'm not happy. fit the cup holder at all. But this awesome. is this is my work cup. Why are you both y'all matching with your cups? Because that's what I do, Andy. That's exactly what I do. The reason I, I heard about this is I was driving with G over the, the break and for for the holiday like uh, work present that she got, like she won some shit, they gave her one of these Stanley things. And she's like, oh, I already have one. I already have a cup. You can have mine. And I'm like, no, I don't want your weird ass branded <laughs> thing. And I looked, went on the website and saw this blue and I'm like, yeah, I love this shit. So I need it. So that, of course, and then I was like, what's the biggest they had? Not this. There's a 64. I thought that's crossing the line. I mean, we'll see. The future we'll see. will tell. It's very heavy, though. Very <laughs> heavy. <laughs> <laughs> workout. This is going on, of course, the producer slash producer Nick Scott. Happy New Year, Tim. Happy New Year to you as well. Of course, this is Kind of Funny's In Review, where each and every week we get together to rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. If you love what we do, please support us with the Kind of Funny membership <laughs> on Patreon <laughs> or YouTube. To get all of our shows ad-free, watch <laughs> us record them live, and get a daily exclusive show. What's happening, Andy? And he's just lazy. He's, he's just. He's in a mood. Yeah. He's, he's got a vibe. When Andy doesn't look at me, I see how long it can take me to will him to look at me. And I can get him every time. <laughs> I just. You know what I, mean? I feel it. I feel mm -hmm. the stare, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, you can get in review for free with ads and without the exclusive content on YouTube and podcast services around the globe. Uh, thank you to our Patreon producers, James Hastings, Casey Andrew, Nathan Lamothe. We appreciate all of you so very much. Today we're brought to you by, in or by <laughs> Better Help. <laughs> I was just like, we wrote a new intro. I was literally about to retain it. We brought to you by insert sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell you about that mm. later. Uh, some little in-review housekeeping for you. Uh, right now, we are doing What If Season 2 in the MCU in-review. We're going to keep staying in MCU in-review land next week when we review Echo. Echo. Uh, it is dropping five episodes all at once. A uh, Tuesday night, I want to say. We're going to take a couple days to, to make sure all of us can watch all of them. And it will be recorded on the following Monday for everybody. And I know a lot of people are asking, what about Aquaman? How are you guys going to celebrate the end of the DCEU after the, the tumultuous journey that we've all went on together? We decided we are going to hold off until it comes to streaming uh, and we're going to make an event out of it. We're going to actually, for a friend. we're going to do a live in review where we all watch it 
in the studio together. But you can uh, watch it at home? With y'all. You can watch along with us, um, like we've been doing some of the live commentary stuff, Nick and uh, Mike and them and James and Lisa over on Twitch. Uh, and then we will finally rank it in, the, in our final DC rankings whenever we get more information on when it comes to streaming and all that. So stay tuned. Of course, we're going to rank, review, and recap Aquaman 2. I guess we won't recap it because we'll be <laughs> part of it. We'll be capping it as we go. We'll be capping it as we go. Thank you, Nick. Thank you. But today, we're talking about What If Season 2. Uh, the second season debuted on December 22nd, 2023 on Disney Plus and released each of its nine episodes daily leading up to December 30th, a new release strategy for them. I had a lot of fun with that personally. Uh, did anyone else watch along or did all of you kind of binge? I binged him. I binged, yeah. Um, as part of phase five of the MCU. Um, and then a weird thing happened where not a post-credit scene, but the day that they finished the final episode, they just released a teaser for season three. <laughs> oh, cool. Oh, I missed that. So it's like, that's kind of kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, season three, there was a, like a, a almost three minute clip of um bucky and the red guardian from uh black widow oh, I did see that a little bit. um with uh bill foster lawrence fishburne burn born burn uh gigantamax what's his name mm -hmm. yeah uh what was his name i had it perry Goliath. White. perry Goliath. White, man, man, perry white perry mason never forget uh, so okay so when that season three thing came out i thought that was like people trolling or i thought mm -hmm. it was maybe a leak from season two, unseen footage or something that that was, but that wasn't like an official Disney Plus tweet, was it? It was, yeah. Oh, they officially uh, were teasing it and it just said like streaming soon or whatever. Oh. Like, I think we're gonna get a lot of Marvel Studios animation stuff uh, coming up, like as we should. There and it, and we'll get into it here, but I think we will we're, we're, uh, receiving this well. Um, and they they were saying that what if is kind of gonna be their like. <clears throat> Not tent pole, but kind of like the we're gonna have the show go on as long as we have interesting stories to tell, and kind of have this be like the the what what's the word I'm looking for? I don't like 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 the skeleton, I guess of the foundation. whole of foundation. Right, That's yeah. a good word of the Marvel Studios animated plan because we know we have zombies coming out, which is a spinoff of this, and uh, we have X Men '97 um, among other things. But there's a couple weird uh, facts about this. So season one and two were kind of written together, like. Like, so everything we've seen sense. so far, most of it, like it was, you know, obviously animation takes a long time. So a lot of these episodes, some of them were actually supposed to be from season one. So the Tony Stark Nebula episode um, where Grandmaster, uh, yeah, that and was supposed to be season one, which is why some of those characters are in the finale of season one. But that oh, they didn't get their, their backup story or whatever. Mm -hmm. And supposedly and like a lot of this is hearsay stuff, but supposedly the preview they put out for season three was supposed to be in season two gotcha. but gotcha. it got uh, got ended up getting pushed let's just this talk about goldblum for a second though you know best. what i mean oh. come on oh yeah and this is just super 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 speculation and like the this is from um update underscore marvel claiming that they have some some info on what the they season, got marvel in their title you, season you three episodes might be i'm just gonna read them because i think it's kind of fun to just speculate sure. what if what if the other half blipped Ooh. Oh, that's right. so that's getting that's into cool. stuff that we're actually like wondering. <laughs> oh, that's uh, stuff we actually would want to see. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, what if Maria Rambeau was Captain Marvel? What if Wanda watched musicals instead of sitcoms? That's fun. Uh, what if Pietro survived Ultron? What mm -hmm. if Okoye took the heart shaped herb? Uh, what if Tiamat destroyed the Earth? We're Damn, finally getting some moon some shit. Um, what if no, no, Tiamat's the, uh, the big statue or like the big uh, eternal thing? Celestial. Oh, the, the dude in the water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. why are they talking about him? Uh, <laughs> Nobody but, talks but, about it. But, but Moon Knight, what if Khonshu chose Peter Parker? Oh, interesting. And then what if Natasha Romanoff survived Vormir? We'll see. I, I That's close. I'm That's leaning cool. towards Ow! believing these, but, and then the, the Bucky one as well. But. I fell all this way on Vormir and broke all my bones. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Hawkeye, come get me. Red like, I don't even know what to oh, do. <laughs> no one's ever survived before. I don't know. I gave me the stone. I'm very badly burned. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this season was produced by Marvel Studios Animation with AC Bradley serving as head writer once again uh, and Brian Andrews primarily directing. The music was done by Laura Cartman, who also did season one and the Marvels recently. Um, and yeah, the final episode introduced an updated Marvel Studios logo that had all the animated characters in oh, it, cool. which was, was kind of fun. Um, but yeah, now we're going to get into our thoughts on what if season two. 
Nicholas, I want to start with you. Sure. Um, I like What If. I liked. I really was high on season one. I think a lot of you guys were not. Uh, but I think this show continues to be really, really fun, low stakes, and just a good watch. It's. It, I mean, it literally is the most creative thing that I think they do right now because they have as much license as they possibly want to have for it, right? Um, and I think the only thing that I had to get accustomed to, I think which I did for season two, and I actually think Blue-Eyed Samurai 4 was the, the animation style. I still, I don't love, but I've become accustomed to it now, and now I accept it as sort of like, this is a good medium going forward for these stories. So, um, and I think this one's, I think this season was was better than the first season as far as that's concerned. But I enjoy these. I like them. I want more of them. Greggy. Timmy, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Great. It does me well to see you. Here we go. Uh, I had a great time. Yeah, I really enjoyed myself here. I don't know, you know, comparing it to season one, I don't know if it's lowered expectations. I, again, I didn't, I didn't hate season one by a stretch of the mm -hmm. imagination, but I remember being a bit let down in certain points of where we were going. And then, oh, they didn't get this voice actor, but they had, uh, I thought the voice performances were great this time around. I really thought everybody was killing it. I really enjoyed everybody I saw there. Even people like Josh Keaton stepping in to be Captain America, right? Which he's done before, but I thought, you know, they, even the people who are like, oh, you're not Chris Evans, but I'm not sitting here getting hung up on it. You're Tony Stark. I'm not getting hung up on i'm enjoying this uh, and outside of that i thought the stories were fun they were enjoyable uh you know i thought it worked even though not all the way because obviously the ending of the show but it felt like this one was a bit more anthology of like all right cool 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 here's a bunch of stuff that's happening and questions we're asking and then to get back to captain carter who i just adore and kind of forgot how much i adored from season one and get so much with her and the different outfits and different suits and for some reason I feel the animation style works so well with her. It reminds me so much of the old Max Fleischer uh, Superman cartoons, sure. like with mm -hmm. her and her hair and her the shield. Like, just a lot of great stuff. A lot of stuff to really enjoy here. Not every episode worked for me. Some lost me along the way. I thought, you know, uh, but we'll get to them on an individual basis. But overall, I had a great time. I am looking forward to more of this. I'd like to see them do more animation in terms of like, let's give Captain Carter a movie. Let's get like, let's get in there and play with it. And I think what works so well for the season, for at least me and my enjoyment of it, is it is. Cool. We're going back to the well. You know, we can show you the original Avengers. We can do Captain America. We can do Peggy. We can have all these different things that are the characters I really care about. Whereas with the newest wave, I'm still struggling to find people I'm really attached to. Greg, do you do you want to mention what happened yesterday when Tim left to go home to play a game? Yeah. Greg looked at me and no, Tim goes, "All right, you're, and you're ready for what if tomorrow, uh, Tim?" I'm like, "I gotta be. Don't worry about it." And Tim walked out and the door shut and I bust out my AirPods and I turned in and I completely forgot. <laughs> I've watched, I watched two episodes of this show. I am not prepared. I need to watch all of them right now. I, I, wow, I, I, I made some joke and he was like, Andy, I'm going to need you to not talk to me right now because I need to watch <laughs> fucking four hours of television right now. Yeah. I'll have you know I nodded off at the finale last night. Had to watch it back on my desk today. Not because it's a bad finale. Just because I'm tired and yeah, it's midnight. Yeah. There definitely was a point this morning where I was like... It was only nine episodes, yeah. right? Not yeah. ten episodes, <laughs> not eight episodes, nine episodes. Yeah. Andy Cortez. I liked it more than season one, but I still don't necessarily love it. Um, I, I think because these feel like m movies that are just scaled down to that 30-minute runtime because of all the different acts that are happening, like it's, it's fast-paced and it's great and a lot of it is fun. But because of that, it's like we're getting... Where in a movie, if we had like, let's say, 10 comedic moments in a two hour long thing, those 10 comedic moments are still here and they're not super high quality and they are much more often, I, I feel. And the whole tone of it just kind of feels off to me um, where a lot of it does feel a lot of it just feels. Did you slack Roger to write Andy a note? Well, Andy, did, Andy didn't have his slack open. Because <clears throat> when Tim, when he was like, oh, I can feel his eyes burning into me. And then Tim went into the intro. At 12.53, I slacked Andy. Mm. They call me Colby Smolders because of my eyes. And then I looked over and he didn't have the computer. And I can't just let that die in the vine. So yeah, I slacked <laughs> Roger and I said, will you write this down and bring it to Andy? Oh, perfect. Can't let that die in the vine. Um, <laughs> I, I do feel like a lot of the tone is still a bit off for me, and a, a lot of the writing doesn't work for me either. Um, it just feels like lesser than because they have to get through so much in such a small amount of time. And at that point, it just kind of feels like a um, like a diet version of what we would get with a, a with an actual like good feature feature length film. And yeah, a lot of the a lot of the humor doesn't work for me. Some of it does. I I mean, I feel like Jeff Goldblum kind of steals it for me. 
And those the last couple episodes I really enjoyed though. I did have a good time with it. I uh, felt kind of uh, I just wasn't necessarily caring about a lot of what was happening early mm-hmm. on, and then kind of once we start to see that that through line of what Captain Carter is doing and um, Sorcerer Supreme kind of taking over, all that stuff I thought was really enjoyable and fun. And uh, Kohori's episode was probably my favorite. I just loved the action, and I loved this little tool set that they gave her, uh, which is always always a problem I had with Moon Knight um, in that series. I think the show was more enjoyable than season one, though. I, I definitely had more fun this time around. What do you think, Tim? Oh, I was going to say, that's inter- it's interesting. Because uh, I, I, I think I like season one a little bit better just because of the actual scenarios I thought were more interesting. But, sorry. Yeah. I I, uh, I I like this a lot. I, I feel like I I enjoyed season one. I think I enjoyed season two significantly more. Um, and I think it is because I enjoyed the scenarios of this one a bit more than last season. I just felt like there there was a bit. I don't think there was a dud episode this season. I feel like there was a couple duds last season. And I think that the highs here were like pretty damn great. Like yeah. I think the final two uh, were like awesome like i didn't expect them to go as hard as they did and have as many characters involved and i think that they made some smart choices of focusing on when they had an awesome guest voice actor like just letting them lead the episode you know like having the the diehard happy hogan episode like that just being super fun and just like completely leaning into that stuff but then having all the hella stuff and being like oh yeah we got her so let's let her just go and jeff goldblum obviously yeah um, so a lot of fun with all that stuff. I feel like the uh, the Kahori episode was really cool, introducing a new character that's not like that we haven't seen before, and like really giving them the time to like get an origin story, and like it made the multiverse feel a little bit more like multiversal as opposed to just it's exactly the twenty movies that were Phase One through Three. You're getting mixes on those again. It's oh no, let's kind of get into a little bit more. Seeing all the Ten Rings stuff and like getting. A lot of the phase four and five references i'm like oh i love this we're yeah. starting to gel we're starting to like get everything all connected um i i'm so with you andy on the like these are just movies condensed so that brings a lot of problems and i think overall it does just feel lesser than because of it but i was surprised at how funny i thought the show was like i, I think i was laughing a lot at the yeah. jokes and in ways and i was like oh that's interesting and it i think the writing of the show reminds me a lot of like old school college humor videos where like they're written by fans for fans and they're kind of just making references that they know we're going to get. And you're either into that stuff or you're not into that stuff. And I get it, but I am. So it like just worked for me in the sense I'm like, wow, you're really playing off of a joke, like a one line joke from one of the shows or a movie from the past, but like you're bringing it back in a, in a way that like, isn't funny, but is like, slightly clever and when you add enough of those up together i feel like it's like oh there's something here i'm with nick that the art style just still isn't what i want it to be i think that they there's obvious reasons why it is what it is right and i think that they are trying their best to flex on it because there are certain episodes like the um, black widow peggy winter soldier style team up episode where like they're in that room and there's bullet holes everywhere and the light shining through them all they're like Okay, they're like yeah, some, some cool, cool shots. They're really, really making the most of yeah. what this like art style is. It's just not my favorite thing, and like I would give anything for this to be a Star Wars Visions type. Every episode has a different art style, but I understand that's costly and time consuming. And if this is going to be their kind of like foundation show that they're going to do a bunch of seasons up, I'd rather just have more in the style, and I get it. But um, had a great time with the season. Really enjoyed the day by day delivery of it. I feel like it. It allowed the episodes, like it gave me time to not have to binge them all, but then uh, oh, space, reality. Um, but it also like didn't have too much time in between to make me think like, eh, I didn't really like that. And what, what's coming sure. next? It was kind of just sure. like, all right, on to the next thing. Like sure that episode was a little more jokey than I would have liked, or that one was a little more this or that. Um, overall, very impressed with this. Um, I don't know how high it's going to rank, but very happy it exists. And I think that uh, it was a, a nice kind of, reset point uh jumping back into 2024 for the mcu into the just to piggyback off of the peggy back hey. he's got the card he's fucking um it. you slack roger to tell andy that was an awesome <laughs> uh to Don't kind of piggyback off of the art style and the visuals i um i it kind of reminds me of invincible where we learned later on after watching season one of invincible that the a team super high budget animators would work on certain fights and a lot of the other like kind of normal lesser paid i guess animators would work or less experienced animators would work on 
some of the just kind of generic fights that would happen here and there, but it, I, I visually saw a difference and a stiffness in animation from some sequences compared to what was happening at the end where everything looks so fluid and so mm -hmm. creative and fast paced and there's like awesome shit happening on screen. But earlier on in this season, I, I was just noticing like a degradation in like characters just kind of moved like it. He's very this, much like they're moving on an axis. The, the heads move this way. And the, like, this is gonna sound like a like a, a a crazy knock, but you'll you'll understand it. Like compared to like budgets, but it reminds me of like the like watching something on like Red versus Blue, like in the earlier seasons where yeah. it wasn't necessarily not not the machinimation or whatever, but yeah. like early three D animation type stuff that we were used to seeing on the internet. There was some of it that just didn't look awesome, but the final sequences I thought more than made up for it because they were so like. Dude, watching Hella and uh, the Ten Rings, uh, I've already blanking on his name, all when of those we... sequences fighting Odin were so sick. Mm -hmm. The final episodes were so sick, dealing with all these different heroes and move sets, and it just kind of felt like they threw everything at the wall, and it all worked. Um, and then just to go back on the, the humor thing, when everybody kind of like it makes fun of Marvel humor, as like, the, oh, he's right behind me, isn't, the, isn't here, whatever. I feel like there was enough of that to kind of for me to not enjoy and a couple of like the oh I guess we're doing this now like I feel like that happened a lot in these shows and it's just like it you happened just say it. it's Darcy let's just remove Darcy and it'll solve all your problems no no I, I don't how I don't, dare you I mean <laughs> how I, dare you I don't necessarily disagree I think there's a lot of that with Darcy as a character but I think even with you know fake Tony Stark and and fake other characters there are a lot of well okay we're doing that now and it's just like yeah, I, the Tony, the Tony Stark's the one that, that sticks out for me. He's the one that I wish they had just gone a different direction for. And, and no disrespect to the voice actor that's doing it, he's doing his best. Robert Downey Jr. doing Tony Stark, but I I wish they had just been like, let's just do a Josh Keaton. What's and that? Josh Keaton is the voice. He's awesome. But I uh, agree. I, I, I thought he was just Steve Rogers. Oh yeah. Yeah. Am I wrong? Josh was Iron Man in the VR game. Josh is Captain America in this uh, season, whatever. Yeah, I, I think it's obviously. I thought really... it was a good Steve Rogers impression. <laughs> oh, I didn't. I didn't. Mike Wingert. Stuff. What's that? Mike. Oh, sorry, Mick Wingert. Is oh, okay. The voice Wingert. Actor. Again, I'm not. I don't mean to. Do, I'm not saying that the actor is bad. What I'm saying is, I wish the direction had been like, "Hey, make this your own. Don't emulate Robert Downey Jr. because you can't." That's where the humor for me, and that's and the humor in this series altogether is kind of what holds it back a little bit. I think if they had nailed the humor, this would have been one of the most fun cartoons that I've watched in my entire life. But what I think, well, why that happens is because they're, they're just so stuck to him being this, and you can't redo Robert Downey yeah. Jr.'s Iron Man. You just can't do it. So don't try, right? Um, Peggy Carter can obviously be Peggy Carter because it's Haley Atwell, but, you know, and Cate Blanchett is amazing. But, like, I, and I wish they had let him just be like, make this character your own. And also, just for the love of God, I know we got to hit a 22-minute runtime. Slow it down. Every single thing in this is boom, 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 boom. And that's, comedy doesn't exist there. Comedy has to exist in a, in a pregnant pause. And you, you lose a lot of that because you're actually not physically standing next to a real actor. So it's harder to do in cartoons. But there's multiple times where I'm like, that is a hilarious joke. I have no time to laugh at it because we're on to the next thing. And we're just talking too freaking fast. And I think we, because of the runtime, lose out on maybe slower, quieter moments with characters. And like, you know, having, you know, a deep conversation here and there, even though the writing maybe wouldn't necessarily facilitate a, a deep conversation like that. Cause I do think it is all uh, like pretty surface level dialogue, which you know, makes Peggy Carter falling in love with every Steve Rogers. She sees, <laughs> like, I, I, I think, which makes sense for Steve, the format, you right? Um, you the but you're not my Steve, but, but <laughs> yeah, I, I agree because it is so fast. They are throwing a lot of jokes in there and, uh, the ratio was just like wasn't quite uh, working out for me, unfortunately. I mean, you have like you have these wonderful moments with uh, Jeff Goldblum, right? And it's just some of them are just buried by the fact that Robert Downey Jr. Is, or, or uh, Tony Stark has a joke right after it, and you're like, ah, that didn't quite work. You gotta Jeff have Goldblum you gotta so have good. a moment. You <laughs> have to good. you have to give <laughs> Jeff Goldblum the space, and I don't know how you do this in animation where he can just stop talking for a second and have it be the funniest fucking thing in Thor Ragnarok. And they just don't have those moments here because everything is just edited. What about when he winks at his own statue and it winks back? <laughs> that was fucking great. That was great. Oh, but, huh. but, but, you know, with a lot of this stuff and with a lot of these performances, you you know, it's just so incredibly it, it, hard to capture that unless you're filming someone in real life because you have to have those, that, that magic moment 
that Jeff Goldblum does where he just pauses in the wrong place and it's the most hilarious thing possible. But you can definitely see, specifically because we all have production backgrounds, you can definitely see where the, they're like, okay, let's cut that little, let's cut the space out so we can keep this moving along. And it just, for me, pacing-wise, kills a lot of the humor in this. What what sort of animation style would you, I know you, you mentioned visions, like different sort of, like, because I'm not against you when I say, like, I don't love this art style, but there were certain moments in certain shots I uh, that... I was watching, I was like, man, I wish, I kind of wish Invincible was a, was this 3D animation. Just because of all the variance in, like, shading Boo and shadowing this and man. coloring. Yeah. Yeah. Boo him to the ground! <laughs> watch, end up watching Blue-Eyed Samurai? I'm, I'm yes. like, a third through it. Yeah. I feel like, Phenomenal. for whatever reason, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it's that's the same style of animation, right? I mean, it's... It, People can get mad at you about, like, oh, it's technically this, but I'd put it in the same category. category. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing differently, but that show, to me, is... We we need well, to share some it look, notes. It looks hand drawn. Like they're they're but going. How are they getting that right? Because that's all, what the shader work. Yeah, dude, it's so good. It's and also, amazing. I feel like they're just like when they go to render, we, they need to hit it like render at twenty four frames per second, not one hundred and twenty frames or sixty frames per second. Like like what if is doing? Because that show looks so much more cinematic than this. This looks like it's a little bit more TV. I think one thing that maybe throws me off even more with the art style in What If is the um, them kind of going for the likenesses of the characters and it's kind of like what Fortnite does like this is how our this is how c rogers fortnite looks in fortnite version, right and it's kind of like stylized and and it, it could be that that's kind of throwing me off in some places where i just don't like the the big eyes like animated look i wish i, I just wish there was like something different i can't quite put my finger on it but i agree with you that i there are several moments that i do not like the look in this show but there are like you were mentioning near the end like there's there's um dude hella hella all, and all white oh awesome. amazing was, awesome that whole that episode was dope yeah I'm, all I'm, that was dope the 10 rings all that the way on. they could do all that shit where it's like stopping his staff i all that stuff you just it's be so hard to do in hand drawn i think it is the 10 rings episode where there's a lot of like the different generals behind him with like a kind of a smoky environment and it looked so damn so good. good and impressive and i just kind of wish the rest of the show looked like that i actually thought the one episode i thought was not going to look good that i actually ended up liking a lot was the racing episode on uh mm, on sakar. Grand, yeah sakar i thought that like all this is super fun and how everything's the sense of like inertia as they they jump off the thing i'm like this is all working for me yeah yeah really cool stuff uh we're gonna take a quick word from our sponsors and then we're gonna go through all the episodes this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Around New Year's, we get obsessed with how to change ourselves instead of just expanding on what we're already doing right. Therapy helps you find your strengths so you can ditch the extreme resolutions and make changes that really stick. You can get out of your negative thought cycles and find some mental and emotional peace, and it can give you the tools you need to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. Some of my best friends use BetterHelp and love how helpful it can be for learning positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. It empowers you to be the best version of yourself. It isn't just for those who've experienced major trauma. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Celebrate the progress you've already made by visiting betterhelp.com slash kind of funny today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash kind of funny. Betterhelp.com slash kind of funny. Everybody! <laughs> Welcome to What If Season 2, everybody. We begin with What If Nebula joined the Nova Corps. Man, you look like a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Yondu is dead, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Can you believe it? It happened again. Wow. <laughs> wow. What are Not you as sad on? this time around. <laughs> of course, there's this whole shtick where Ronan was about to blow up the planet, so they locked the planet down. It's been five years under the dome. Once you go in the dome, you change. You know what I mean? Don't want to get out of it. Though. These people do want to get out of it. Uh, city's kind of gone to hell. We got a real cool dread Blade Robo Runner. Blade, Blade Runner. Runner. You know, we got a hard-boiled detective mystery love here. It. Love yeah. the setup. Love the visualizations. It peters out toward the end because that's where we start. Get, we go from, hey, we've we got this slow, methodical pace 
to, oh, we're back to the humor and all that stuff. And I was like, ah, we almost had something wonderful here all the way, all the way out. And I, by the way, I just watched Blade Runner 2049 again. And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, they kind of nailed that vibe. They, they really did kind of nail it. And like, again, I think that this starting with this episode was a good call of like, hey, our style can work. Like our style can like be adaptable mm -hmm. and look really damn cool. And I, I feel like the the humor here with the, the Korg stuff, I think kind of <clears throat> brought it down a little bit for me. But it also brought us calling her Nebby, which yeah. I loved. Don't call me Nebby. Dad, bad. Uh, yeah, so we go through there. And of course, uh, Glenn Close, who isn't Glenn Close, but she's Glenn Close because she's Nova Prime. Uh, she turned out to be the bad guy, which you kind of knew you expected as you went through. But I appreciated the flip there. She's like, how did you know? Or whatever. You have a, she's you like, have a flip in it. She's like, but noir. she's like, yeah. I, you know, we are the light, follow the light, 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 light. And then you said any means necessary. And I, I was like, oh, that's a fucking good way to know. You know what I mean? And we had Jude Law there. Yogrog, yeah. Yogrog, Yog everyone. Who can <laughs> Yog, forget? Who can forget Yogrog there? The gun to my head could not have pulled that name out. Yogrog. Sounds like you're having a show trying to say Yacht Rock. <laughs> <laughs> I, I loved mean. her using the the hologram of Yondu, yep. the whistle to get the, on, the arrow to come. Like, come on, that's sick, and that's very like detective. Very cool. A hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, that's the synopsis in the short version of it, right? As we ran through, and if she eventually opens the thing at the end after thwarting the bad guys, Howard the Duck's a lot in this a lot. Mm -hmm. Seth Green out there doing his shit. I really liked the the rock, paper, scissors, the meat, Korg, sure. root. Great. That up. Great. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Wow. Uh, I enjoyed this one. Uh, I'm a little bit with you that I think it, it ran out of steam there at the end in terms of like, oh, I like what you're doing here. This is very specific. And then yeah. it just became more of like, oh, okay. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Episode two. Episode two, what if Peter Quill attacked Earth's mightiest heroes? Uh, that's right. It's 1988, everybody. And Peter Quill's come to Earth to fuck our shit up, right? Why? Because, of course, Ego got to him. He actually got delivered by the Ravagers. Cool idea. Cool. Now he's you know Great using one. him as his little uh, guy to go out there and take over planets and shit. Cool he's idea. <laughs> he's my little guy. He's my little guy. I just like him. I just like him. And, of course, this is, you know... I do I'm, not like the way Kurt Russell looks in this man. I do. It, it's it's a lot of hair. It's just a little too much hair. <laughs> I was. I, it doesn't I, translate to this style. No, it's just like, like uh, Kurt Russell in the movie. Like I was, I didn't feel that way. Even though it's like it is ridiculous looking, but it is a dude who was trapped like in the seventies or whatever. This like translating to this cell shaded look just looked very look, odd. Man, and there's weird. a fine line when it comes to mullets. <laughs> you know what I mean? A real yeah. fine line. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm a sucker uh, for hey, it's the Avengers, but it's not the Avengers. And so like to see this version of the, the 1988 yep. Avengers is how they would have put it together in 1988. Yeah, it's yeah. So cool. Having Peggy in there, Howard in there, right? And some references out there. Yeah, hey, it's Scott. Oh, uh, getting to see a young Hope. Getting to see uh, Perry White, Lawrence Fishburne from uh, Batman. That was awesome. Superman. Dude, they're just going for it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it just it like it i really loved their use of cast and like to your point of just like what would this timeline look like and just using characters that we're familiar with or even just like vaguely familiar with really really cool yeah uh you know i thought it was uh really nice to have bucky and this was the episode that i was watching where i like i liked episode one episode two i was like oh right i fucking forget how much the show can fucking slap when i'm really into it and i was really into this one i liked seeing the combination i like seeing bucky toss back in there peggy's reaction howard's reaction right uh and then of course i thought it was a nice twist there of hope being a kid yeah a kid and peter and that's how we figured out like, there was a great line in there right they're just like peter. <laughs> how are we going to convince a 13 year old boy to like you know turn on us fight fight his father and like you don't have kids do you yeah, <laughs> you know what i mean like that was really fun. i love quill saving a little raccoon toy on coney island yeah 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 yeah, yeah 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 fun stuff really enjoyed that one as well yeah me too i think fun set up and again a lot of heart with it with the relationship between hope and peter and just them seeing and like becoming friends and her just being like the only voice of reason being like he's just a kid like you guys are fucking off it was good this, see, this to me is where I love this this type of series because it makes me character like I haven't thought about Lawrence Fishburne's character yeah since the last time we had to watch that movie and I'm like oh fuck that would be cool like, you just you get that one moment where you're like strength that yeah. would be fucking cool if they all got together in that time period uh, episode three is what if Happy Hogan saved Christmas and for me. This was my hidden gem. Huh. When this oh. one was coming around, I'm like, I'm not going to. Like, I saw the Die Hard clips and stuff, and I'm I, like, and Darcy. I was like, yeah, I don't know. This ain't going to be wait, What shit. is the hate with Darcy? I will not stand for this Darcy <laughs> she, hate. It's, I think it's what we me? talked about before. Taking her from a two-hour movie and shoving her into a 30-minute episode, she gets like really, I, I, I get like it. She's like salt. You, you can are. never have too much of it. 
<laughs> you can. You can. Right. Oh, oh, heart disease. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. That. Heart disease. Oh, she still got some. I mean, there's always some great lines. She in has there, the mew like. mew. You know what I mean? Like she always. She has her moments for sure. I do just think. Have you ever had? She a real represents job? No. the MCU humor more than I think anything else. So condensed into one it thing. Can be a lot, a lot more. It can be a lot. <laughs> I mean, for me, it was when Sam Rockwell showed up. I was like, yes. Come on. I mean, Fuck yeah. yes. Sam Rockwell's back. I didn't realize that was what's gonna happen. That was rad. And then getting Purple Hulk. You know the the banner thing f falling into his leg and then it automatically goes why would it do that <laughs> that's when i laughed in the office yeah. like, this show's funny <laughs> like, I, that was a great bit this episode i mean you know the tried and true the die hard look like, man but, yeah using all the the mcu stuff for it though i i was really impressed with how deep they went into it of like even going through like trying to find the different ai tech and like they they find edith and friday and like all the the different ones we've seen throughout the the movies and love that love the AI action <laughs> uh the the big fight the hallway fight of um hogan just running through just destroying all of the like ultra things that aren't aware. ultron yet um and just the oil flying everywhere and i'm like guys that's supposed to be blood yeah <laughs> like they're going wild with this yeah. one i thought that was yeah really it, was, sick. it was yeah it was visually cool i i w when you bring up darcy being kind of the one who represents the mcu humor the most a little too much of the yeah uh star wars is this really old movie you know like a little too much of those jokes throughout this whole franchise of every character captain carter throwing out movie franchise oh that's a movie on her like there was there's just it, it felt like eight different people wrote these episodes and they weren't aware they were all writing those same jokes you know mm -hmm. see for me it felt like one person wrote everyone's jokes and see i think that i mean that's the big criticism obviously with the marvel movies is that the humor is the same no matter what character is talking but it's when it's condensed it gets really really apparent where yeah darcy's humor is happy's humor because they're talking the same cadence they're written by the same person and so and again if you don't put spacing in between that or you don't have other like you you need a nebula character in there who's Dad. like who's just Dad. like the, the the straight person you know it's just like a you know blank slate so that the humor can bounce off that person Having said all that, I have to abstain from voting on this one because the second there's a Die Hard episode, it goes to a hundred, like it goes to number one on my list. This yeah. is, wow! And I think every show should have a Die Hard Christmas themed episode. Uh -huh. It's just a travesty when they don't. Is a Christmas is, party to say it'll be a good time? It, 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 yeah, exactly. Is, is that like uh, the? Are you like a single issue voter? Like <laughs> whatever presidential candidate says, like. I will require every show to have a Die Hard episode in it. Well, first off, the the, the holiday themed episodes of any show are always my favorite. Halloween first, and then Christmas second. Oh. And yeah, whenever they go, which is the low hanging fruit with a Die Hard episode. The second I realized it was going to be a Die Hard episode because I they saw the tower and all that stuff, and the terrorists came in. But really, yep. when the terrorists came in, I was like. This is a diehard episode. This is number one. This is the best. Episode. But with Sam Rockwell, I, just what great dancing, use just of dancing the entire Christmas, time. Die Hard, and MCU all Perfect. together. Perfect. Yeah. Can we just recast Sam Rockwell as somebody else Why? in the MCU? He's not dead. Just bring him back. Yeah, hammers around. But like in the like in the actual MCU, I don't think he's he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, coming we, back. The last he's in time jail. we saw him was the uh, the one shot that was the uh, the the Mandarin. Oh, they. I mean, they're not doing shit with him. Let's, let's give him something, him else. something. Yeah, Let it be Tony Stark. He'll yeah. be back. He'll be back. Really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I Put him in something. Give him four of the characters. <laughs> <laughs> the Avengers of Sam Rockwell. Let's, let's, let's do a Law and Order where he He's just comes back good. as a DA and then as a victim. And, then and uh, also, let's free Oscar Isaac. Like, like how do they, they get him out of the goddamn Moon Knight, Moon Knight shit. Yeah, what you a know? Give him something else. What a travesty. I, I watched want Dune again on the on a flight. He's so good in that. Incredible, handsome. Oh, good. Beautiful. Episode four, what if Iron Man crashed into the Grandmaster? Uh, of course, at the uh, Battle of New York, Iron Man doesn't make it back through the whole the wormhole to fall back to New York. Instead, he falls through space and time to also, end up on Sakaar. Because I feel like a, a big problem with the what if show is that we all are like, all right, what are cool what ifs? And then we have a big list and then the show just does not give it. Like earlier, I was talking about potentially season three having what if the other half was blipped. That's something they were all excited for. These what ifs that this show does are just so like, what the fuck? Like, why would you come up with this? For some reason, it worked okay for me in season two, where it's like, oh, I now that my expectations aren't that they're going to be the what if scenarios I actually care about. I'm more like, you guys have stories to tell, and you're just going to come up with a reason to tell that. And I think that this is a great one of like, how do we get Tony to Sakar? And it's like, oh, after the wormhole of an Avengers one, I'm like, that's really cool. Like that's I'm I'm in, and you're gonna give me in the same way Nick's there for the diehard Christmas shit. You're gonna give me a race, 
I want a race, baby. And how have we not had a race in the MCU yet? Good for them. They did. Uh, because it's dumb, and that was dumb in this I episode. I fucking hate you. Just so you know, <laughs> just so you know, that's, that's when I was like, that's what we're doing with them? All right, I, wish they I wish it was cooler than it was, yeah. but eh, I enjoyed it. So, I mean, like, oh, oh, Mojo Man. <laughs> we have all the clips from you. Time moves out. I was like, this is fucking great. On your mark. <laughs> Get uh, set. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, ready. Yeah. <laughs> and that's where we got a lot of good silence of, and cut to Tony Stark and be like, what the fuck is this guy doing? <laughs> oh, go get him, everybody. <laughs> Come on, you crazy kids. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, he's yeah, just yeah. so good, it's man. Perfect. perfect. I Everything did not, you did made me laugh. Uh, so this is one that I enjoyed the setup for and I enjoyed the performances and stuff. I didn't vibe with the race. I didn't need the race. I didn't like the race. It wasn't my thing. But I also really didn't vibe with Gamora showing up. I don't like that Gamora showed up and I also don't like that Gamora in any multiverse, and I know I'm painting broad brush, but it's, it just feels like if you talk to her hard enough, she'll understand her dad's wrong and she'll change. It's like, all right, like, come on, do something different with her here. There was a whole fucking thing with Guardians to get her there, not just a bunch of inspiring conversations. Yeah, I think the big problem, though, with this Gamora is we've seen, because of the way that this shit happened, like we've seen her in the last season, this version. You know what I mean? Like she was part of the Guardians of the Multiverse. Thanos whatever, getting so his cheeks clapped in every episode, Dude, every <laughs> single time. <laughs> it's it's just... <laughs> uh, and another thing, this is a, a Tim thing, but the the music is so disappointing to me in mm. this show because they so often bring back character themes and have moments. I'm like, this is great, and then they so often don't, or they so often just like have generic sounding stuff, and it really brings the whole thing down for me. Like. But the art style can shine, or the art style can just feel like a generic 3D animated thing that we write off. That you'd see on, like, uh, Disney, what's their XD or whatever. You yes, know? exactly, exactly. And then I feel like so much of the music it gets so generic that it's like, man, this makes me feel like this is less important. Yeah, the, I, I was, this is one of those episodes when I saw what it was about, and I'm like, oh, race. I don't like episodes of anything or movies about races. I just feel like it's always so predictable. Um, but this one got me. It was creative. Him doing the suit and then the suit forming into the car and all that stuff. I I found myself halfway through this being like, this is very creative and very very fun. Episode five. What if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper? What like this is just such a great pickup of again like Captain Carter being Captain America. And so like let's just put her into Winter Soldier and being on the boat and like it's just oh, the man. outfit. I was like, Thick. fuck, this Thick. is awesome. And I loved this as a follow up to last season of not everything needs to connect to each other, but like there can be season one episodes that there was Captain America one retold and this is Winter Soldier retold and adding them together. I'm like, this is really damn cool. And like the way they did it too, like the, the plot of the episode after the boat, I thought was like very compelling. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, they find uh, Steve Rogers in the Hydra stomper outfit there. He gets away. They give chase. They find him. They reboot him. We're going to go to the red room and take them on. We get there to like this, you know, fucking fake ass town it was awesome you know all said uh, the widow's cool. bite they all the widow's bite yeah. how the hell did like all them robots creep up on them while they were chatting though yeah that mm -hmm. like that happens in a lot of movies obviously uh, but like here it was just like asinine <laughs> a lot of wd-40 oh really okay <laughs> she's just so in love and no peripheral vision just <laughs> it's, like, it's very right. much it's very much like how captain america beats captain america Bucky is alive. And that's enough to throw him off his game and get out of it, right? Mm. Steve, once again, is alive. <laughs> Here we go. Have the conversation. But he's brainwashed. Uh, the woman from The Mummy shows up, even though I don't know if it's actually Wait, her. It was her. It was, her. It was actually oh. her, playing the role of Melina. Uh, with the other widows, they all get into a giant fight. Uh, a lot of fun stuff happening here. As uh, Oh, I, you know what? I'm sorry, too. And I want to call it out. We skipped earlier, because uh, I've just been, obviously, in a quick recap. One of the fucking things I loved... Bucky Barnes being Secretary of State, having the Robert Redford kind of role. That was cool. Oh my as God, hell. That, was cool. that was awesome. And then uh, when I put it in my notes, because the animation we talked about in this episode, I'm liking a lot. But when uh, she gets on, Captain Carter is fighting Hydra Stomper, and they fly through the levels of the building and then out. I thought that was awesome, dude. That was awesome. <laughs> and then the shot of the Hydra Stomper like dead in the air, about to hit the grounds, uh, and uh, her uh, Peggy on top of it, and then Natasha flying in and flying straight <laughs> down for her to get in come yeah. on that was awesome like um, i was i was sitting there like oh let's go let's go let's go everybody i need a round of applause everybody for sebastian stan the redemption of the improved. year most improved. improved most improved player man he did great great Old job man buck dude that was fantastic yeah yeah, yeah he wasn't expecting uh, you know that but he's proud of it you yeah know what i mean he learned and a lot doing that the tommy lee and pam thing about how to voice act <laughs> oh yeah you're right that's exactly <laughs> what it was all the adr um but not only his performance <laughs> but i thought. think i 
I think bringing back a lot of the bigger names, like I, I wasn't expecting Chris Hemsworth to be here. I wasn't expecting um, Paul Rudd to be back or whatever. That makes it feel more important. Mm -hmm. And I think that like yeah. that that's so important for a show like this that can feel throw away if they're able to bring back big names obviously robin Downey jr is going to cost you 30 million an episode or whatever so that's not worth it but it does feel like it matters so yep. i i really appreciate that 100 percent, yeah i think i think that went really far and again to where i was like i want more animation out of them i'd love them just to run with these ideas and give captain carter a movie and have people back or do you know do more what if obviously and uh the, i'll or look give this up in a second um but from my memory elizabeth olsen wasn't scarlet witch last season but she is this season I'm gonna confirm oh. that, but like that's cool though. That, that didn't like, sound like her at all. It was definitely her. Oh, it's her now. Really? Yeah. yeah. Holy shit! That did not sound like her. Um, I, I, I think that one of my the things that I didn't love about season one was that because they were essentially setting up a foundation for different types of characters in different situations, it felt a lot more throwaway in season one. It felt a lot more like. Just turn your brain off and have fun with this episode. It's like, yeah, but I don't have anything to cling on to because it just doesn't feel like it matters. But here, having a lot of these characters not only returning, but returning from different episodes, I'm, I feel like I'm getting a different version of the Avengers, like watching a cartoon that feels more um, continuous. Like I'm getting a kind of a through line of a story that maybe I might not see any of the characters from the last episode in the next one, but in two episodes from now, they'll be joining somehow and now we're kind of like forming a different Avengers, which I think is really awesome. See, it's interesting because I felt the opposite on this one. I thought season one built better. I thought season one started where I was like, Build this feels better. very, very, this feels very disposable. And then by the end of it, I was riveted by what was happening with the Watcher, with Ultron and like Killmonger and all those things. I felt like that, that threw me for a loop of saying like, hey, this is just going to be anthology. These are one-offs. And then as it started building to a bigger thing, I liked what it built to bigger. I, li I like the overarching story in Same. season one. Uh, better, way better than this one. The the conclusion of Strange and and Peggy Carter. So I thought that was very anticlimactic. Well, no, I I guess my point was, I loved what season one built up to eventually, and I yeah. really enjoyed kind of finally seeing some payoff. Um, but early on, I'm like, this feels kind of pointless to me, and it's not entertaining enough for me to interesting to want to watch it, uh, even though like. Hey, turn your brain off. It's just fun. It's like, well, it's not fun for me because I'm not like really enjoying any of the dialogue or, or the story moments. But having it build up to that thing in season one and then seeing more glimpses at the characters we saw from season one, I feel like, all right, this is becoming its own different thing now. It's be, it, it feels like something is formed here and it's kind of awesome, I think. Yeah, totally agree. I, looking up here, uh, I, I, there's no evidence of... Did Scarlet Witch not have a voice? Because she was she a was zombie. a zombie. I don't think Maybe she had she a voice. Didn't have yeah. a voice, but yeah, it, it was a big deal that she was in season two. So it's cool that like cool. some characters can later get their proper voice. Uh, of course, then uh, they win, right? They get out. Uh, they did the thing. Steve Rogers is still out there, so of course uh, Peggy's going to steal uh, Tony's car and leave. Natasha stops her. Uh, it looks like she's going to go off to find Steve, and then we get, I think, the funniest joke in the thing of just like, I am the Watcher. I see all. I observe all. I know. What the hell is this? <laughs> the, the portal opens up, sucks her over to Renaissance to set up that And episode. that's the cool Kinda stuff. Hype, man. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, shit. There's, the, there's like a canon story like yeah. building here, and I was like, this is cool. Although I do have questions. It's like, so Scarlet Witch can just make a portal from Dimensions to get people to come. Seems very contradictory to like the whole point of Scarlet Witch and chasing her kids down and everything in Multiverse of Madness, but that's just me being forget a every, fucking Forget nerd. everything forget you know. Yeah, know. where's America? Mm -hmm. Chavez. Chavez. I was going to say Ferreira. <laughs> <laughs> the actor. Uh, <laughs> number six the on the episode list. What if Kahori reshaped the world? Uh, we introduced to a Native American population of the Mohawks. Uh, they are here. They are living their lives and everything's great, right? But there's a forbidden lake over there. Don't go to that for a that lake. Mm -hmm. Kiwi, they go over the whole thing's in uh, the in Mohawk language. Uh, yeah, that's that's this cool. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. I like when they do that. It reminds me of prey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Them, 100 like, have the have the have the, you know, courage to actually do that and just fit in that. World. And you get that these Spaniards in there with the, their damn lisps all over the place. Mi nombre es 
something Costello. And it's like, man, how do y'all do that? It's crazy. I can't talk about it. You just did list. it. And I did it, I guess. You just fucking did it. Pretty but yeah, that's the thing. When they're over at the lake poking around uh, the conquistadors show, Spanish conquistadors, uh, and they're like, yo, we're going to take this new world because it's what we do. And they're like, oh, no. And so they all start killing people and running. And then uh, they fall into the lake. And then, they, oh, she got shot, fell in the lake. And then she got sucked into the blue portal through the Tesseract. This is Tesseract stuff. Dude, anyway. this is just awesome. Like, I, I know that this is What's not going to be everyone's cup of tea here. Sorry, continue. But uh, I, I really thought this episode worked. And for it being a condensed movie, sure, pacing issues in some ways like that. But I think more so than not, it it felt like a great origin story. It introduced us to a new world, new cast of characters, like cool power sets, cool visual language and identity, which we always talk about mattering so much in the MCU. I was like, this is kind of just rad. And as a what if premise of like getting the Asgard shit connected was was awesome. And the space or yeah, Space Stone, Tesseract being like involved I'm like this is all just really really well thought out and this could have just been a like the least interesting episode because we don't care about these people but now it's like no no this was interesting they did a great job building they made this. us yeah. care yeah. and like the, the the orchestration in this was awesome and i feel like they really were like let's make themes here like let's create something that we will reference in the future and i think that they kind of knocked and, it. and it's they... also like unheard of right like they've never just made a new character on screen Right? No, well, not in what if MCU has, but like Agent Coulson. Oh no, but I guess I mean like superheroes with power sets and stuff. Like this is like their first original thing in a while, right? Yeah, I mean just fully original as far as I can tell yeah. top of my head. Yeah, which is very and, cool. And it's after watching that episode, I'm just like, I want to see this character on the big screen. And I want to see question. the power set like in an actual MCU movie. Like that's gonna look so sick. Tim, have they talked about if there are plans to do that? No, but I mean, I I do think going back to what i was saying about what if being the foundation like i think that they are very much trying to have the yeah there's a bunch of like random stories but there is a through line that we're following that like matters more got it and i obviously feel like they're trying to make her a big part of that gotcha i just want to see the like the visuals lighting up on her oh, face sure, and, for like, sure. yeah, yeah. having like this sort of flash speed uh style like movement with you know levitation and all that. it's like it's such a sick ass power set and they utilized it really well I mean, even just like I sorry, just go back to the origin of it, right? Where we had that one scene with, with the test rack being split in like half. Yeah, that is nasty. The oh. whole visual, where he's like, like he has the "you shall not pass" moment. Yeah, with, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and then it just cuts the line down all of Asgard and explodes it. I was like, well, what the hell are we doing here, man? Yeah, man. The show rocks. So fucking sick. And it, this has my favorite line of the the whole series. We're gonna need new songs about today. Yeah. Oh my god, damn, yeah. dude. They know what they're fucking. That was doing. a bar. <laughs> so yeah, she goes into the sky world. She comes out. They overthrow the conquistadors who came in too and got all fucked up. That was cool. Uh, but then she fucks all them up. And then I really, really, really fucking loved showing up at the Queen of Spain's. Like, we're gonna keep invading and shit. And she's like, "Fuck you, are. <laughs> and yeah. I'm gonna hold you up, and we're gonna have peace, or I'm gonna kill everybody." <laughs> I, I I did love the juxtaposition between. Like, I'm not scared of your powers. Levitate you to the ceiling and explode your throne. chair. Yeah. And then Jeffrey Wright going, she brought together the nation with peace. <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's obviously like, yeah, obviously she didn't hurt anybody doing this or whatever, but it was just such a funny juxtaposition there. But yeah, that was a very cool sequence. Just scaring this whole place going like, no, 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 you're all, you're going to play nice or me and my whole crew are going to like, use these powers. And I love the flip that the Mohawk, Mohawk language is one color subtitle. Spanish was another, oh, and then when that. she came through and was talking Spanish, her subtitle matched. The, I thought that was. You know what was real stupid in my brain? I'm watching her walk in, and I'm like, "Damn, Mohawk language really similar to Spanish." And then funny. she starts speaking more and more. So I was like, "Oh, it's just Spanish." Yeah. She's just, she's <laughs> it was just funny because we were watching in in uh, it was me and Jen watching, and she she didn't catch the subtitle thing. So she's like, "How would the queen understand?" I was like, "Oh, that she switched to Spanish there." Blah blah. It's like, "Oh, that's really cool." Doctor Strange opens the portal and comes out speaking English, and I'm like, "Here's where she would look at him and go, okay, yeah, <laughs> like what are you saying? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, that takes us. Uh, Doctor Strange comes through and uh, the portal, right, and, and comes out over to Kahori, and that's the end of that episode. Uh, that brings us to episode seven. What if? What if Hella found the ten rings? Tim yesterday was bringing up a bit of a gripe, a bit of an issue that he was like, you know what? After watching all of What If. I feel like they re-recorded What If, uh, the yeah, line yeah, yeah, yeah. of What If, and I was like, Tim, it's been like that the whole time. It's just you've gotten this warped sense of what the line read is because of how Nick has done it, that when you hear Jeffrey Wright go, What If, 
that you think that it's supposed to be what if <laughs> you know? it's just because he does a little he goes up a little yeah. at the end with it that that's what i latched on to yeah but i swear to god and again i'm, I'm sure i'm wrong I feel like every one of those is different. <laughs> it's not. I feel like every single time he says, because he finishes whatever the narration is and goes, what? <laughs> and it's not bad. It's good. It leaves you with a sense of wonderment. But it is. It is. <laughs> she really hey, asked you. I'm about ready for the episode now. Hey, this guy really set this thing up. But I just want one read where he's like, what if? No, that's I it. Go so down with it. The thing, Go down man. at the end. Like I, when it's I'm here, this, I still haven't went back to season one, and I don't even want to. I don't want to know the truth. But I'm convinced it's the same read every episode this season, and he's just saying it normal. I don't notice anything weird about it. He just fucking says the words. What? No, he, go, well, he goes. Well, what? we we latched yeah. on to the fact. No, he, <laughs> he does. We he latched, does. We latched on to the fact that he said what. If <laughs> you know, like when when we first heard that, we were like, it's kind of a weird thing because we'd expect him to go blah 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 blah. What if? Yes. What if? Down. But he, he goes, goes. What? What if? if? We're gonna play a game. Pitch. That's All right. right. I'm gonna step back here. I'm gonna pull up season two, season one. We'll decide. You get to pick which it is. Okay. I like this. I like this. This <laughs> is a good game right here because, like, I when Tim was bringing this up, I was like. I had the same thought, but I know that it has been just so warped over the last year and a half. Oh, I'll be clear. I think it's warped. Like, I think that for my entire memory is just Nick. Like, I don't think that just I like have I no like idea it. what season one sounds like. Because I remember that. I remember episode one or two of, or no, I guess that full episode. Did we do a screencast episode breakdown? Yes. This, okay, yeah. So I remember early on being like, kind of a weird line read, because instead of just being like, what if? It's what if? He, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh. I think the direction with it for me is that it's supposed to leave it like there's more coming after it, right? So it's not a definitive statement. It is a question. It is a, like a, and I think again, uh, we're making fun of this. Jeffrey Wright's oh, yeah. great. His bio is awesome. His voice is incredible on this. But yeah, I'm dumb and basic, and I pick up on stupid little oh, things like it. that, and I run with it. Here, there's the pitch right there. Yeah. What if? What if? Don't look. Nobody look. Okay. Is this season one or season two? We're about to find it. What if? One. Season one. But that's the same. It's the same. It's not. It's the I, same. <laughs> yeah, play another one. Play another one. It's, it's I swear to God. I swear it's to God. It's the same. He <laughs> goes more delicate with it. He's like, sometimes it's like this. Sometimes it's like this. Motherfucker just wrote more delicate. He's like this. Sometimes he goes, he gives a little light touch. What if? <laughs> You're doing the Kevin like Hart. Like I, no, no, no. I didn't say damn. I said, damn. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing the Kevin Hart thing. Ponder the question. What if? It's the totally same. Totally different. It's the same. We got, you, have to, you got to play him back and back and back. We, we got to edit Andy, this. Andy, There's no way. I, I think Nick might be right. He's not. He's I think not right. I think he, season I think one, he does Greg, it Greg, is time. it season one, then season two? That is correct. That yeah. was it. That yeah, was that it. Was, I think that was very clear. To yeah, they're identical. Randy. You're being blinded by the sense of wonderment. Everyone bring up. A, everyone pick an episode and bring <laughs> a what if up on your laptop. <laughs> at the same time. It was a blind test, Andy. God, Kevin, can you bring it up on your computer and just give us both of them? Ah, uh, sure. Oh, here we go. Well, what if they're the same? What? If? Well, now I can't tell anymore. I've what had all the sodas uh, in front of me. I have no idea. Uh, uh. <laughs> How many more episodes do we have? <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'm not going to bring it up. We'll all agree that Nick is right and Andy's wrong. Hold on. Thank you, Kevin. What if? Identical. That's season two. That was season one. That was <laughs> season one. I'm out. I'm out. They're identical. I'm telling you. What if? Uh, 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 uh. That sounded different to me than the way he just said exactly the same but i'm not sure that second one there was season two but they were all the same it was the episode it, it was a season one episode and a season two episode and they were both the, the same episode I think, I there's got to be someone that did the what ifs on youtube <laughs> pull them all up <laughs> Let's listen to them all because I, they're all the same but that's I, a wild I, thing to do i think we're the only ones who feel this way <laughs> somebody has done this i guarantee it somebody has done there's a compilation a of all the what ifs out there literally someone did a compilation of michael keaton from the other guys there's this compilations of everything <laughs> That'd be like someone doing a compilation. No, I was gonna say of the clapping part in French of every time they did, it, and someone oh, maybe did that. Possibly. There's weird people out there. That's fair. They're identical. I can't. Yeah. Uh, first, I mean, first uh, thing, there's nothing there. All right. I'll, but I'll that is something for us to do. And put up on our channel. There you go. Yeah. Billion views right there. Mm -hmm.
Holy shit. Jeffrey Wright's name <laughs> over and over is again? Is it different? Call Jeff. I wish, this is why I wish we knew Jeffrey Wright. That's for so why. many different reasons. Yeah. Jeff. If. I'm going to call you Jeff. Uh, uh. Uh, uh. uh. <laughs> 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 like, I swear to God, like, in uh, last season uh, we were talking about it, Nick uh, at made if 10 syllables long. Oh, yeah. It's <laughs> the rest of the sentence. I'm just trying to pitch match. Uh, uh. Uh. What if? The, I, what but you, but you, we can all agree, Andy, that your expectation, not saying it's right or wrong, your expectation what of it, what if? Yeah. Because dun, dun. if you were to say, what if Tim went to this thing, right? I'm you wouldn't go, you wouldn't say, what if? I'm Tim, totally I guess you would, but I would I say, what if? Would. Well, I guess you could say it either way. But I'm saying, like, what would continue? Would. It's got an ellipse after it, so which means that there's more after the statement. Yeah. It's, not, it's not done. Yeah. I would go down with it. Our first piece down. of content of 2024. <laughs> <laughs> We've been stuck here for 15 minutes. This is the minutes. best part. Roger, if you're watching, you should be compiling all the what is. Stop everything <laughs> Stop. for kind of funny day. <laughs> Forget everything you know. We need to know right now how this nets out. If it's I need all... a title on each one of them. <laughs> yep. So yep. Like, and yep. I need yep. to, I need to see the visual so I know you're not blind taste with me. this. Yeah. My God. I what? went to the bathroom. Did we go through another episode? Did we I talk? Think we did. Did we, we talk about the. We're done. Yeah, we just started. How uh, about the 10 rings? We just got to 10 rings. Okay. Great. Oh. Uh, we, I mean, we talked about yeah. it earlier. We liked the thing in the fine punch. I just loved it, man. This episode's I, awesome. I think it's great. I, Shang-Chi world and lore and weapons and everything is like something I'm looking forward to seeing a lot more of. And I wanted to fire up Shang-Chi immediately. Dude, they just, they're so freaking cool. And like having Hela back, giving her that much to do, I thought was rad. Was the character that she trains with, who was that? Was that the Michelle Yeoh character or was that someone different? Do we know? I that was the, the mom character. Mom character. Was yeah. Michelle Yeoh? Yeah, maybe. I don't think she was, was Michelle Yeoh wasn't the mom in Shang-Chi, was she? I don't remember. Anyway, it was dope. Like her learning how to use like that power inside of her as opposed to having the the first off, this is how dumb I am. I had no idea her crown was like the source of her power like Mjolnir was for Neither Thor. Neither did I. I had that no was idea. cool. So her having to like basically just be Thor all over again, but in a different way and come back and actually like learn mercy was so cool to me. I was like, ah, this is a cool this is Yeah, nice. and uh, yeah, I think having that cool moment of the hammer going to Captain America's hand, like having her, if she if she shows mirth, mercy, yeah, having Odin being Better like, what power. happened to my uh, like? So why cool. would you turn down the opportunity to kill? And she's like, I, I think I forget the line that she dropped, but it was really cool. And, and then and he here abdicates. comes that crown, like yeah, yeah I, th I thought that moment was awesome. The fight scenes were great. The beginning um, where we get, we get the Mjolnir being destroyed, like she destroyed it dude. in Ragnarok. The visuals oh, were cool as hell. Um, but yeah, I think just like. I just want to watch Shang-Chi in a lot of, uh, maybe just the 10 rings. I want to just see more 10 ring fight scenes because they're so creative so and tight. cool. And the sound effects are great. And it just brought me back to that time that we rented out the theater and watched it. And Michelle it was Yo one was of my favorites. The ant. She was the ant to the yeah, Michelle. Shang. Uh, uh, Fela Chen is who pronounced, who was Ying Li in the movie. Got it. Uh, that's the sister, right? Yingli is the mom. Ying Nan is the sister. And then Jai Yi is, it seems like, a new character. Oh, okay. that was the trainer in What If, wow. um, that she's the uh, protector of Tao Lo, um, who found the Asgardian goddess of death. So yeah, seems like a new character. Okay. Cool. Um, all I know is... Awesome episode. Had a you, guys remember that, you guys remember that part in Thor 1 where he's running around and goes, Hammer! Hammer! And Darcy goes, this guy's hammered. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of humor <laughs> that, that Darcy's that. bringing to the table. <laughs> There's a scene of Hela on the horse riding that I was like, this looks just like Zelda. <laughs> like, this looks like a screenshot from Zelda. I did love that uh, sometimes you just, you know, you get drunk with love. Yep. And then you get hit in the fucking face yeah. <laughs> like he got when yeah. he was trying to mack on her. I love the... Don't kill her. It's just, it's just kind of a baddie. Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> love the mont uh, the training montage. Love the power-up scene. All that shit's always great. But the line of, my dad has a new girlfriend, Frigga, dreadful woman. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, Kate Blanchett kills it, right? Yeah. That was my thing. For me personally, this episode was the first one in the run that actually lost me, I felt, a little bit. Where I thought when we got to her and the training and being, I was kind of like, eh. like I liked her interacting with the guy, but then the training and the thing, I was like, nah. It got me at the end with the white and like, you know, like there's a whole bunch of cool shit in it. And Kate's performance, I think, is fantastic. I loved the love story, but the middle sagged for me. Moving on. Number eight. What if 
the Avengers assembled in 1602. Uh, we pick up here with Captain Carter in uh, the Renaissance theme universe. Guess what? There's a giant old uh, green crack in the sky. It's sucking people up. Uh, Thor gets pissed off because, of course, it sucks up Hela, his sister, who was the queen. And he's like, you were brought in to save this and you can't do it. So now you're an enemy of the state. She takes off. I love the conversations of her talking to the Watcher. I, and the Watcher being like, yeah, I can get out of here. You're not supposed to be here. She's like, no, I got to fix this. I got to fix this. Good. Like, I love that. And then towards the end, right, I actually wrote down the line, right, of like when she was in uh, the cuffs on the wall when they had apprehended, right? And she's like, I have to try because I'm Captain Carter. I was like, that's yeah. fucking so awesome. Cool. Yeah, huh? because you're human. Yeah, I'm Captain yeah. Carter. I, uh, I fucking loved this episode. And it reminded me of why I love the medieval or the anime episodes of South Park or the episodes in Family Guy where they go back in time or whatever. Like, I just... I love seeing whatever their versions of these characters that we know are going to be back in that time and just seeing those variations, seeing the Annihilator. What the hell is that dude's name? The big metal guy right with the, the fire eyes? D D the Denialator. But, uh, I just love that, like, this is what this armor suit would look like back then yeah. and having the mask go up. All that stuff was just super inventive and cool. I, Destroyer. That's Destroyer. I, I thought it was kind of. I didn't. I, there was a part of me I was wondering, like, do they have their powers? Like, I was kind of confused for a lot of it. And then I saw the little tiny wasp force that I was like, oh, I guess they can go small. Like, I was yeah. very confused by exactly what the rules were here. Um, <laughs> but it was awesome as hell. I really enjoyed this one. I thought this was very, very, very cool. And like yeah, it being fun. teased in earlier episodes, like the, specifically the Captain Carter episode, like having that, like, the suck down through the portal thing. And then having this be, like, a prelude to the final episode, like, just really really good use of their episode run times i think yeah uh a lot of fun i enjoyed seeing you know like the man in the iron mask be hulk in there right and like he likes it because it was quiet busting him out him smashing through everything tom hiddleston yeah oh yeah killing it just, it just being the actor loki or whatever and i forget what it is when she's like trying to insult thor and she's like it's almost you're almost as bad as actor or whatever the iago like, oh. <laughs> just him always talking about iago um yeah i there's a part of me that i should have expected hulk to be the man in the iron mask but for a second i thought it was dr doom like oh, when uh, they showed him in the jail holy shit <laughs> and i was like oh my god are they doing this and then, like it was ended up not being it because eventually you hear the mark ruffalo which i do a really good mark ruffalo impression i don't know if you know this i, I mean you do great impressions all over because yeah, uh, currently frog here is when you're like high pitch and when you go down low you become mark ruffalo Whoa, that's one of the worst impressions ever. Andy, I don't really? know, man. Yeah. yeah. I really? thought that was going to be a Ray Romano. You know what? Too. Yeah. You know what? Okay, the middle Never one wrong. has to be John C. Riley. So it's Kermit Frog here. And you go a little bit lower, you become John C. Riley. You be, that's, that's, that's actually close. Good. That's yeah. close. Yeah. 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 You become John Ruffalo. <laughs> no, <laughs> man, we need to work on it. John Ruffalo. <laughs> John, John Ruffalo. John Ruffalo. Ruffalo. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, of course, two things I liked here as well. The interaction when she meets uh, Steve uh, Robin Hood or Rogers Hood. Rogers Hood. Uh, and, and like, I'm dead in this world. That's great. I mean, terrible. And then also then I thought it was cool that we get yet another Steve Rogers, right? Being the forerunner, uh, right? And having it be that, yeah, I went after Thanos and oh, I slashed shit. the thing and I broke the stone. And I was like, oh, that's fucking cool. Dude, I was popping off. Yeah. And the fight scene of Captain Carter and Captain America sharing the shield was like, this is insanely cool. Yeah. Uh, a great episode. Uh, they send Rogers back to his universe, uh, preventing the incursion. And then, of course, while she's there, uh, Sorcerer Supreme, Strange Supreme, shows up, uh, gives her some scotch. Yes, yes. Maybe that's the next one. I forget, but it doesn't matter. Uh, he shows up and it's whoa. And then we move on to episode nine, the finale. Uh, what if Strange Supreme intervened? Uh, like I said, we pick up with some scotches here. Uh, he's willing to take her home, but first he's got to take uh, her to the inner sanctum. What is he called? I'm going to name it. Sanctum Infin in Infin No, this is Infinitum or whatever, uh, where he's, of course, taking all these world or universe uh, ending baddies and put them in little pokeballs and put them up on the wall or whatever. And he's like, oh, cool. And it was at this moment, y'all, that I'm like, this is the best thing I've ever goddamn seen. Like, let's fucking go for it. Like, let's just get a mini secret wars going on. Every cameo we could possibly get. Let's get the good guys. Let's get the bad guys. Let's just have some goddamn fun. Use all the weapons. Use all the, all the armor. Power, power, power up. Fuck yeah, man. This episode kicked ass. 
However, one of the world killers has escaped, universe killers has escaped, and he needs uh, Agent Carter to go get her because, of course, if he went to do it, uh, he'd be spotted a mile away. We get there. It's a destroyed South Dakota. Red Skull's on Mount Rushmore because neither Captain America nor Captain Carter uh, were able to stop it. The explosion was bigger. Red Skull took over. They destroyed the world. Uh, uh, Captain Carter goes to engage, and we find out, of course, it is Kahori. Uh, she's doing her flash speeding around over there or whatever. I thought this was all really funny, too. We're like, all right, that was a good one. Then she gets knocked out again. Okay, and like, my turn. And then she's just getting her ass whooped, but she's able to do it. And then, of course, Kahori shows up and is like, yo. I awesome voice actor. Yeah, and also cool to see her speaking English yeah. right again, like how long she's been around the multiverse at this point. Uh, you know, grabs the shield. I'm not actually the enemy. I bet you, he told you you're here to save the multiverse or whatever. It's not actually that at all. Uh, they get beamed back up by Strange to the Sanctum. They start a fight, or well, Kahori starts a fight or whatever. They're, he's blasting. She's doing, Agent Carter's trying to piece it all together. Not only is he getting the worst bad guys, he's getting also a bunch of good guys because he's got to feed the forge because he's trying to restart his universe and get Christina alive again. Yes. Very cool. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, they start fighting, and of course, it's uh, they're in over their head a bit, so Captain Carter does the logical thing and throws her shield around there, smashing all the Pokeballs. Uh, people start escaping, <clears> and <throat> you get more and more bad guys. She's like, all right, maybe me starting a internet or interdimensional prison break was the best idea. Uh, I will say that I thought that that was... It, it shouldn't be called a leap in logic because all this is pretty illogical, but like the idea of the shield breaking these magic stones that encased mm. characters, I thought, I like initially, I was like, this is uh, how is she going to get out of this situation? Is she going to throw her shield at Kahori's? Ka and then her just like breaking all of these, like, like it's glass. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I thought that was like kind of odd, but uh, everything that followed up was awesome anyway. Yeah, a lot of great fight scenes, a lot of great nods, a lot of great things to call out however you want to here. I really appreciated. I liked when Thanos came out of the hole or his portal like we usually know. Then we see someone else snap. He fades away. It's Killmonger in that the suit. was stones. awesome. I mean, I just got chills right now. Like, the, And anytime you hear those the, the, the drums yeah. as an intro, like before we see a character, like this is fucking cool. And for it to be the Killmonger from last season snapping away Thanos, I'm like, this is <clears> this is why I want a, this show to be good. Like, like to, for moments like these and I feel like this episode was just like, we're just going to deliver like so many cool different like planes of action happening and all of them are going to have cool characters. We actually want to see fight each other doing the things we want to see them doing, yeah. which I thought was very cool. That armor was so awesome looking. Another two. We got to get him out of the suit and Corey just goes, whoop, whoop, and he's out. <laughs> so, then he's dropped into the giant fight. And he's fighting a million things over there. Uh, Captain Carter puts on the suit. They go after. We had a uh, great cameo from those awful fucking elves from poor Dark World. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. The dead eyes. Little yellow black eyes. Uh, they go on to fight uh, Strange. He, his evil beastie version comes out, and they're battling, and they're fighting, and everybody's shooting, everybody's going crazy and stuff. And then uh, he eventually sacrifices himself by jumping into the forge, falling in there. Uh, There's, there is a, as, again, with having to speed everything up and just some of the pretty basic dialogue between these characters, there's a moment where I think they realize that they have to shoot or destroy... There's a line where Dr. Shades is like, don't do that. That'll make it all fuck up or something. I'm like, why would you tell them? Like, <laughs> yeah. it was just like, there's stuff like that that just, it it feels lesser than Yo, for a little moment. Yeah. If you do that. He was like, don't do, why would you do that? It's like, I'm sure we can, as the audience can assess that, you know, we don't need you to tell the audience and the good guys you're don't, don't stop what I'm trying to do by doing that specific thing. It was just kind of lame. So he falls in there sacrificing himself. That actually restarts Christine's universe, but he'll never be born into it. He's never going to be there. Uh, Kahori got sent back to her universe. Watcher takes uh, Captain Carter to the Christine universe. And they're like, okay, cool. And she's like, can you take me home now? And he's like, can I take you home now? Yeah, but can't we see some cool shit along the way? And he's like, oh, you ain't seen shit. Does a little snap, swings around, and it's the it's fucking, the fucking world Loki tree. tree. The ah! world tree. <laughs> so Very freaking cool. cool, man. That was awesome. Dude, I, I, the last 10 minutes of this episode, I was like, this is awesome perfect for me like love the loki tree obviously but the final fight of her just getting all the things mjolnir oh Ten that was rings, so cool everybody throws their weapons and they're shit, getting pulled all the out yeah, yeah. Stones and stuff it's like this full power display like we're going we're going full tilt into this and then she fought so daenerys targaryen with from yeah the super scroll <laughs> yeah super scroll oh, secret <laughs> Oh man! So there you go. That that was what if what season if? two, um, Ragu Bagu. I do not think includes what if. Thank goodness. Yeah. 
So we're gonna go straight into the uh, the MCU rank. I'll, I'll double check. I'll double check to make sure. He but just I gave you like a Professor McGonagall look, where he like looked over his glasses. I right, wonder like, if does, it does, does in fact it include. Does. Yeah, Ultron. Ultron is on here at number twenty, oh, in the top yes. of the B category. Infinity Ultron or whatever the fuck his name was. So now you would do Sorcerer Ragged. Evil Man. Okay. Bag you, Sorcerer Strange. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, the podcast within a podcast where we rank and review all the villains of the MCU. Remember, of course. Of course, the list currently stands at 56 characters, so we don't read through them all. We put them into different categories. We call them tiers. We have S tier, A tier, B tier, C tier, D tier, F tier. Where do we want to put Strange Supreme? Strange Supreme. Sounds like a taco. Kind of weirdly not really in, in this series as an yeah. overarching bad guy, so very low. Yeah, it's fine, I mean, but we got you know. He was set up in season one. He was awesome, and I think him as a character is great. I just think... He was kind of just a punching bag in this season, which is yeah. like, it was a very, very cool punching bag, but I don't think he's way more great of a bad guy. Yeah, I think way more compelling in his, in his episode in season one, in my opinion. Hmm. I'm thinking hmm. C, because it's not bad. Yeah, I'm looking through B tier, and I, yeah, I would think he's got to go down to C tier. B tier's got people like Ultron and What If, but Baconator in first class. Uh... The memento stepmom from werewolf around us or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, what, what I did like was him popping into C cohort and be like, we've been looking for you for a long time. And you getting the sense of this cool team up power up thing. And then the Captain Carter thing leading up to it, uh, I guess the very next episode. And kind of feeling like some, like he's building a team, but you, I didn't feel the nefarious uh, yeah. Vibe from him until that episode, and I thought that was you didn't get a kind of cool. vibe from the man with the sunken eyes, the pale white skin. I'm like, this guy's been evil from the jump. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you can't judge a book by its cover, Greg. That's okay. accurate, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I'd I, put him in C still. Yeah, I'd go C. <clears throat> okay, so let's decide where in C. Right now, C begins at number 30, where we have Cree plus Jude Law and Captain Marvel. 31, Francis plus Angel and Deadpool. Number 32, Red Skull and Captain America, the first Avenger. Number 33, Rockwell and Mickey Rourke and Iron Man 2. No way. I want my boot. Number 34, The Dink and the Sentinels and X-Men, uh, Days of Future Past. Number 35, Magneto and the Brotherhood and X-Men. Number 36, Mads and Dormammu and Doctor Strange. And number 37, hey, Ethan Hawke and Khonshu in Moon Knight. Khonshu. No, Dormammu. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> you had one job. <laughs> I always keep on guessing. You got his job ready, though. You what? did the job Where thing. Where do you want to put Strange I, Supreme? I think bottom. Oh. I think the bottom of C. It's not quite D, but I think that all the rest of the villains are a little more fleshed out, and they have flaws, but... Yeah, I don't think Ethan Hawke was... I don't think the the villains in Moon Knight were awesome, but Ethan Hawke's performance is great, yeah. and here we just... We didn't really get much of an opportunity to see a performance. So. Yeah, don't forget Ethan Hawke I mean, looked great in Lynn. Cambridge Bumberjatch showed up. <laughs> All right, so don't talk Kimber shit about him. Bumberjatch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to argue. You want to put him at 38, uh, bottom of C tier? Yeah. yeah. All right, there you go, everybody. We now have uh, the Strange Supreme uh, put in at uh, 38 underneath uh, Ethan Hawke and Khonshu, closing out the C tier above Vision from Solo in Solo. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Paul Bettany. Yeah. Um, now it's time to rank the MCU. I'm we have them. 45 entries <laughs> in the MCU so Love far. It. Look at that. Three screens full of letters. It's, it's getting numbers. so annoying to make this fucking PSD, man. <laughs> like the numbers are getting. I'm like. Uh, while you all. When you sent me that list, I was like, oh, I have to update some things. And I'm looking at like, okay, well, the spacing is 100. 108.76 between all the letters and number. It's a pain in the fucking ass. Dude. Yeah, yeah. You did a great job, though. It looks great. Thank you. I love you, Andy. Nice I'm going to read them as they lie. Oh. Scarpino. Currently, number one, we have Avengers Endgame. Two, Infinity War. Three, No Way Home. Four, Homecoming. Five, Captain America Civil War. Six, Thor Ragnarok. Seven, Winter Soldier. Eight, Guardians 2. Nine, Black Panther 2. Ten, Loki 1. 11, Loki 2, 12, WandaVision, 13, Avengers 1, 14, Guardians 1, 15, Guardians 3, 16, Shang-Chi, 17, 
Thor 4, 18, She-Hulk, 19, Iron Man, 20, Spider-Man Far From Home, 21, Black Panther, 22, Doctor Strange, 23, Werewolf by Night, or whatever you called it. <laughs> 24, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse Werewolf of Madness. Among Us or whatever. <laughs> what I 25, The Marvels, 26, Ant-Man and the Wasp. 25, Hot Guy, right? Oh, Start from the Hawkeyes. top. Start from the top. No, there's two Hawkeyes. Did I? It's not the list I have. Where, where, where's Hawkeye on your list? 27. Yeah, 27 is Hawkeye. Fucking god. It's, it's on there twice on this oh, list. Oh shit. Yeah. 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 My, my list has Hawkeye well. at 23, 25, 27, and 37. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, my list is right here. We yeah, got we got bad, 20, 25 the, the Marvels, 26 Ant Man and the Wasp Quantumania, 27 Hawkeye, 28 Miss Marvel, 29 Falcon and the Winter Soldier, 30 Captain Marvel, 31 Ant Man and the Wasp, 32 Ant Man, 33 Black Widow, nah. 34 Iron Man 2. 35, Avengers Age of Ultron. 36, Captain America, the first Avenger. 37, Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special. 38, Iron Man 3. 39, Eternals. 40, What If? Yeah. Season 1. What 41, if? Moon Knight. 42, Hulk. 43, Thor. 44, Thor the Dark World. 45, Secret Invasion. Who would like to start? Who are you? Wait, so, okay, I see. Wait. Uh, was there I, anything else wrong, or it was just this? Wait, well, I don't understand how. How is it? so now? Miss Marvel on the list twice. No, Miss Marvel's twenty five, and Hawkeye's twenty seven. Yeah, but so what? What's twenty eight? The Marvels number twenty eight is Miss Marvel. Was on the correct list? You could just oh, yeah, twenty five uh, was the Marvels. Twenty five is the Marvels. There you go. That's Got all you have to okay, change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank, you, thank you, thank you, guys. Sorry. No, no. Thanks, thanks, Kevin. That's my bad. Yeah, don't apologize for Andy's mistakes. Mm -hmm. Be here all day. <laughs> Who wants to start? It's I'm tough. Think, yeah, I, mean, yeah. I, I I like season one that I like the, more than I like this, but I thought we ranked season one really, really, really low. So it's tough for don't, me. Don't 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 listen to what they did. You do your own thing. Um, I mean, I would put this above Werewolf by Night. God damn! Do you know I was thinking the exact same thing, Nick Scarpino? Yeah, my I, mind is your mind. <laughs> peep, peep, peep. <laughs> uh, so at number 23 you guys are saying i, I would put it, i mean i i just like the series i was I with taking down doctor strange too at 22 so dang you know. bro wow yeah i i i got a lot out of this i love how creatively they complex <clears throat> on this how easy it is for them to do crazy stuff and how it feels like it's simultaneously low stakes but also they build towards something every season and i, I really i really enjoyed the first season i'm a sucker for cartoons i'm a sucker for the fact that they could get some of these voice, actor, voice actors back or just do different things with the characters that they want to. I think it's an infinitely flexible series, no pun intended. I like What If. I would put this at 39 above Eternals. And under Iron Man 3? Yes. I would put it at 36. Under Age of Ultron, but above Captain America, first Avenger. Really, really enjoy the show. Want to keep it going. Um, and I think this season did a lot of really great stuff, but I think the MCU has a lot of really good stuff. And I think a couple of the movies above that, I can't imagine putting it above. Um, so that means Nick and Greg both putting it at 23 under Doctor Strange and above Werewolf by Night makes it our new number 23. Yay! Season two. There we go. Like I was saying, next week we will be doing Echo in review, Echo. all five episodes uh, in one in review. We will not be doing screencast breakdowns for those, just the, the big in review episode that is planned to be going up next Monday. Um, so that's going to be awesome. Uh, we're going to be recording it Monday late in the afternoon, so it'll be going up uh, later than our normal type schedule, but the, the plan is Monday. Get excited for that. Make sure you watch Echo um, over the next week. And until next time, have a marvelous day. And...